The next type of problem that we're going to see is we're going to have some sort of a curve. So this last one was a curve that was creating these squares. And so we found this volume. Um, that same thing is going to happen here where we are going to um, have some sort of a curve. And we are going to take this shape and we are going to rotate it around an axis. So in particular, in this one, we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. So what's happening is we're going to take this height. Right? We have all these different heights. Let's say we give it some kind of depth to it. And then we're going to roll it around this axis, which is going to mimic it again down here. But what you're creating in the process is you're creating... a cylinder. So something like that. And so this height right here is kind of the piece that you need. So if we put this idea together that we have this formula, and so it's called the disk method because you're creating these disks, these coins, right? Which means you're creating these cylinders and we need to figure out what the volume of these cylinders are. And so this formula looks like this, but why does it look like this, right? There's a legitimate reason to it. So we're creating cylinders. And so if you remember how to find the volume of a cylinder, um, our volume is, um, is the area of the base times the height. Right. So um, our area of the base is we have a circular base to it, and that base is going to be pi r squared. And then times the height, what we get for our formula is here's your pi, here's your radius, because your radius is going to be dictated by the height, which means you're going to plug in an x value and get a y value. And so that is creating a y value, which ends up being a radius. Right, so there's the pi. Here's the function squared. That's your radius. And then your height ends up being the thickness. Well, the thickness gets infinitely small. And so ours is going to be our dx. All right, so this is the area of the base times the height is essentially what you got going on. All right, so when we do that, we roll it around and then we do an integral of it, we're gonna get all these slices that are infinitely small, but an infinite amount of them, and it's gonna give us our volume, all right? So it says, um, when you use a graph um, on an axis that you're rotating around, right? This is what your formula is gonna be. There's gonna be a little bit of differences if you start to rotate it around a, a horizontal line and you have to shift things. And this gets a little bit more complicated. Um, but when you rotate around an axis, you are creating cylinders or coins, and here is your volume. Right, so this is the area of the base times the height is essentially what you got going on. So let's do an example on this. So our first example is we're going to find the volume of solid generated um, by rotating around the x-axis bounded by this information. So to get that information, let's figure out. Let's create a visual. Let's figure out what we got going on. So our shape is we're going uh, y equals 2x. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't really know. We're going to go from y equaling 0 to x equals 3. So y equaling 0 is the x-axis. And we're going out to x equaling 3. So if we start at 0, 0 for this, and we go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and then up to over one, that is our line. And so that is the shape that we are going to be rotating around the x-axis, all right? So we need to figure out what pi r squared times h is, area of the base times the height. So our volume is going to be going from zero to three, and then pi, the radius is going to be these heights, and these heights are dictated by 
our equation of y equaling 2x. And so we're going to have 2x squared, and then our height is always dx, which is the thickness, and it's getting infinitely small. All right, so there is our stuff. Let's clean this up a little bit. 100% of the time, I'm going to be taking the pi out of these types of problems. And we're going from 0 to 3. If I square 2x, I'm getting a 4x squared. And let's do the antiderivative. So if we do the antiderivative, we're going to add a power. So 4x to the third divided by 3 from 0 to 3. That's going to get us, we'll have a pi plugged in later. Um, and so we're going to have 4 times 3 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 0 cubed over 3, which isn't going to get us anything. And so this is going to be um, one of those threes is going to cancel one of those three. So we're really looking at a 3 squared, which is 9 times 4 is 36. That goes away. So 36 pi is our volume. All right, so let's talk about another potential way to do this. One other kind of let's verify that if you were to take this shape, and this doesn't happen very often, but when you have a linear and you rotate it around the x-axis, you actually create a cone. So I'm going to check this answer by creating a cone. And so I have cone rotates around it would create a cone like this. And if you remember how to find the volume of a cone, your volume from geometry was one third area of the base times the height. Okay, so not a calc version of this. So the base is how far would this be? So our one third area of the base is a circle. So pi r squared times the height. And so that height right there would be a height of 6, which would be a radius of 6. Right? So we are taking a third times pi times 6 squared times a height, which would be this, which would be this distance right here, of 3 to times 3. So if I do this math, the one third of three are going to cancel each other out. Six squared is 36. Maybe tack a pi on two. So since this made a nice straightforward shape, I could actually use some geometry to double check that the math worked out the way it's supposed to work out. 